is everybody. There we go. Hey, you know what? We're going to read scripture. Let's get everybody to stand, please. Oh, that's Tommy. You need to eat something. Acts 4, 11 and 12. Jesus is the stone builders that was rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under the heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's sing.
pavilion should be up because we're all blessed no matter what's going on. And that's what this song is called. I'm so blessed. Name this Mark's song. Mark's song. He loves this song. Make sure Mark is half All right. All right. First song. I'm so blessed.
boxes on the first Sunday in September, which is September 3rd. We will no longer take a regular offering. Today we will take an offering with the buckets, but there, the collection box is also on the table there, which I've seen already seen people using. Good job. So you, you can do that, and you may also put the little connect card in there also. So they will take care of that after church. It's awesome. The administrative board will gather after the service today to pray for our church and especially for our search for a young family youth director. We did that before we, Pastor Steve came to us and it worked. Prayer always works. So anyone that would like to join this little prayer group after church, then please feel free to do that. And this week's prayer focus is our music director, the praise team, and our upcoming small groups. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, we have ice cream left, a little bit of ice cream left in the community hall after church. We have banana, chocolate banana, and there's one pineapple. So no fighting over the pineapple. Uh, as you can see on the table, we have our Crossroads shirts for sale. If your size is not there, there isn't. Uh, we will take your order after church because I'll be putting in another order in several weeks. So that's that. And, and all the other things, there are lots of inserts. Make sure you read those and the upcoming meetings and things like that in your bulletin. Okay. Now we come to a time of children. You may go to children's church. There's some big kids in here that might go over there too. Nope. <laughs> yeah, Tom, we're not making it. Now we come to a time of prayer concerns. I already have a couple. Traveling mercies for Maureen today as she travels to BWI to pick up the newlyweds. And traveling mercies for them as they come home. And continued prayers for Natalie and Jordan in this season of change, transition, and new things. On Tuesday, Pastor Steve and Maureen will take them to BWI and they will fly to San Diego. So let's just all be in prayer for all of that. Uh, it's going to be a big change for Natalie especially and for Pastor Steve and Maureen having an empty mess. We, most of us know that feeling. So it's all good though. Uh, Brenda Spindler texted me this morning. Please pray for her. She's contacted a stomach bug. And also for my mom, Rita Renshaw, who's having a terrible, terrible time with her back. Just pray for strength, that she will be able to strengthen her back. Okay, any others? <coughs> yes, Chuck? Our military. We yes, had, our military. Uh, Osprey crashed this morning in Australia, killed three soldiers and injured five. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a reminder that even when we're not at war, that's still yes. a calling. Military loss of life this morning. Okay. Yes, Manetta? having kidney issues, and that's Manetta's son-in-law. <coughs> yes. I'm going to go away to the court case this week. Okay. Joy. All right. <coughs> yes, Patty. Can you pray for Carrie, um, our daughter-in-law, that she is trying to recover from cancer? She's having um, radiation right now. Okay. I don't think so. And, okay, Terry is undergoing radiation. And Terry. 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 <coughs> it's bad when you get old in here. Huh? All right. And Sarah Jane. Yes, Warren? Is that a prayer concern? served very faithfully and we miss her. Yes, Iris? Yes, and I have great, great grandparents. 
great great grandparents great grandparents <laughs> God, you are so good as we sang in the song this morning. The goodness of God, it never leaves us, never forsakes us. Your goodness is just so apparent if we just look every day for that goodness, for those blessings. Before our feet hit the floor every morning, to be thankful for those blessings to ask you how we can serve you every day. Father, you are an amazing, amazing, loving God. And we are just in all that we can come here together, that we have the freedom in this country to assemble in this place and to worship you and sing praises to your name. Father, we thank you for all of the, pra the praises this morning. You are so wonderful when you answer our prayers and we can sing praises to your name on the worst of days and on the best of days. And Father, all of the prayer concerns that have been lifted up this morning, those that need healing, those who have lost loved ones, those who are suffering from cancer and undergoing treatments, we just ask, Father, that you lay your healing hand upon each and every one of those mentioned and those that are on our hearts that are sometimes just too painful to say out loud. Father, we just ask that you be with us in this service, that your Holy Spirit will just invade this place, and that Pastor Steve's word would bless our hearts and teach us what you want him to teach us. We thank you, Father, for everything that you are and everything that you do. And it's in Christ's holy name we pray the prayer your son Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Father, for the many gifts you bestow upon us each and every day. May these tithes, offerings, and gifts be used to further your kingdom here at Rockawaka, in our community, and abroad. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
All right. Good morning, Rock and Walking. Good morning, Rock and Walking. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See, when we come out here, you guys don't think you have to do what we're doing there. When I hear you guys yelling good morning, it gets me jacked up, gets me ready. So a couple of things. Um, the Little Rock Cafe is going to be in the hall. It's going to be the first uh, Sunday of every month, and there will be, I don't know exactly what there's going to be, fruit and scrap away and cheese and platters and so on. It goes on and on, and it is just going to be an incredible thing. So uh, if you have the opportunity to do that, that would be fantastic. The church, uh, beginning the small groups, I've got, I think, four um, hosts lined up. So you will be hearing about that beginning next week. You'll be hearing quite a bit about that. Uh, what else we have? Okay, very important. Church picnic is coming up. Uh, the annual church picnic, September 24th. Put it in your calendar. You're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and covered dish. And even more important is the fellowship and it's Bring a Friend Sunday. So we just like to uh, put that out there and it is usually an incredible thing. My first one last year was fantastic. Uh, next, you, you, most people here know that my daughter got married um, last week and it was just a, an incredible thing and um, it was a heart wrencher for me. I'm still trying to look at Jordan in the eye, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Tough one. Um, so I and Maureen, who's up there now, she's, I, I don't know if they're on their way back yet or not, um, to pick them up, um, she gave me uh, specific instructions for today. What a shock, right? I need to thank everyone who prayed for Natalie and Jordan, who prayed for their wedding, who prayed, who continue to pray for their life and married life going forward, um, and her mom and I, and I can't thank everybody enough for all the support and love that was given to uh, my family and I. Um, I also, now I'm going to forget some stuff here, but you know, everyone knows who exactly they are. So I wanted to take a, just a brief second. And I wanted to say uh, thank you to uh, Mark, our music director, um, who did an incredible job um, playing for Natalie's wedding. I wanted to uh, say thank you to Craig, who also um, brought the music and it was just, it was really, it was just, uh, it's, it was something special. Uh, Jimmy, where's Jimmy? Jimmy, uh, Jimmy was running the soundboard, did a fantastic job. Um, where is Connor? Ah, I see Connor back there hiding. Because, you know, she doesn't really like to be pointed out. Right, Connor? Okay. <laughs> but she did a fantastic job also, and um, everybody did an incredible job. Um, and I don't think, is Joanne here? Joanne's not here. Joanne. Joanne, did you guys see the banners that were hanging behind it? Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. And she, uh, she did those specifically for Natalie's wedding. And, you know, what an honor it was to have them there. It looks just looked fantastic. So thank you to everyone who prayed and was involved in Natalie's wedding. It was, it was a, a once in a lifetime thing. And, and um, they walk with the Lord, they talk with the Lord, and it's all about keeping the Lord in the center of their marriage. Amen? Amen. All right, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, uh, I come to you, Lord, and I just ask that you always be the center of this church, that the world never gets in and penetrates our church, Lord, that you watch over and take care of this church, that you watch over and take care of all of your people, Lord, all of your children, Father. And as we get into your word today, Lord, we just pray that you show us some new incredible thing uh, that only you can do, that only the Holy Spirit can show us, Lord. And we thank you for who you are. It's in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. So it feels, hey, let me tell you, it feels uh, like I have been in forever because I missed a Sunday. But, you know, last week when it was uh, Sunday, 10 o'clock, I'm just like, hmm, you know, and it feels so good 
to be back. It feels so good to get up here. Sunday is my favorite day. It's my favorite thing to do, and it feels so good to be back um, with you guys, and um, and maybe we can discover some uh, some new word together. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. Now, we've been dissecting um, the Lord's Prayer. We've had two services. This is the third teaching in that. Um, today's... Um, Today's service was really, uh, how can I put this, inspired by Tommy Miller, our daily bread. <laughs> Anybody that knows Tommy knows it very well. Right, Tom? <laughs> yes. Or Rob. <laughs> yep. See, he gives me a hard time when nobody's looking. I said, you do realize I have the mic on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyway, let's let's take a look at this. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We looked at that, and we looked at the opening remarks. We learned what that meant. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That was the second week. We picked that apart and had a look at it and learned a little bit more. And today, we're looking at, give us this day our daily bread. And some of the things that it means. Um... So, you know, Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. So today we're going to take a closer look, and we're going to look at this uh, particular appeal and see what we can, if we can somewhat better understand it. So let me ask you this. Through your life experience, how many of you know what it was like or have to lose a job? I, it, it's... it's uh, when you do that, it's a traumatic experience, especially when you're not prepared for it, or it comes out of the blue, whatever it may be. So why is the job so important? Well, what, it, what, it does, what does it mean to us? It doesn't mean a motorcycle going by. It doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> hey, you got, you got to flow with it, with it. So what does it mean? Okay, so for one thing, having a job affords us uh, it affords us security in life. A good job reduces the need for us to worry about having enough money to eat and pay your bills and, and live life. Um, and it's not just about the money. For many, a job also provides them with a feeling that they're needed, that they accomplish something, that they can get up and put their, their, their shoes on every day and they know uh, that they're going to help somewhere, someone. But I've seen people that have been employed with the same company for many years lose their jobs almost overnight. You know, in this life, we never, ever know what might happen, what can change everything in the absolute blink of an eye. You know, I worked for a company for 11 years. This is a while, way back. And out of nowhere, I was the company manager. And out of nowhere, my boss... I could tell something wasn't right. So my boss, I went into him, I was like, what's up, what's wrong? I could tell that he wasn't quite right. And he looked at me and he said, I gotta let you go. Wow, talk about blow you out of the water. I was like, you're kidding me. He says, no, because we, we have to make cutbacks. I, got, I have to let you go. You know, because I was in a position that paid well, so he could do what I did. He would just have to work harder. So I was an obvious um, choice um, to save money in the blink of an eye. So what I'm trying to say here is that we live in a world that's full of uncertainties. Would you agree with that? Yeah. We have no clue what might happen to us in five minutes, in a day, a week, a month, a year. We have no idea. No idea whatsoever. But you know what? That fear that so many people have out in the world is minimal in the lives and the followers of Jesus Christ. We know and depend on, on the Lord. So with this fourth appeal, give us our day, give us this day our daily bread, Jesus teaches us that we need to depend on our Heavenly Father. We need to depend on him for our every need. 
We pray, give us this day our daily bread. And in other words, we are looking to God for all that we need to sustain us. For how long? One day. Give us this day our daily bread. So we're asking him to provide for us for how long? One day. And that is how God wants us to live. If we go back to Exodus, where God rained down manna on the children of Israel, we find that he didn't do what we probably would have done, did he? He didn't drop down a whole month's supply at once. There's no Sam's Clubs and Costco's. And that's not how it worked then. One day at a time, he gave them what was needed to sustain them. For how long? One day. In fact, some of them tried as hard as they could to um, put some aside for the next day, for the next week. They gathered up too much. And what happened to it? Even then, God caused it to rot and become filled with maggots. So God was trying to get his people to look at him every day. It is so important. It is so important. So from Exodus through the Gospels, God is still the same. Nothing has changed. Not a thing. God is still the same. We look at Matthew, Matthew 6, 25 through 34. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life. Life is not more important. Food is not. The body is more important than clothes and food. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single day or hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow and is thrown into the fire, he will much more clothe you. O you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them already. But seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all the things that will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So what's that saying? We need to come to God daily. He has everything that we need. Question. This is something you really need to think about. If you woke up tomorrow, okay, and the only thing you had was what you gave thanks for to God today, what would you have? That's a tall order right there, isn't it? What would you have? It really hits home when you think about it that way. So, no. You know, in our last message, we talked about seeking uh, first the kingdom of God. We also realize that our king is not only our king, but he is also our provider. He gives us all that we need. Our entire relationship with the Lord is based not on a weekly schedule, but it's based on a daily schedule, each and every day. And as we read, not only do we look to God to supply our needs, but every other creature on the face of the earth looks to God as well. God provides everything. Psalm 145 says, The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. You know, God has never promised us that we'll be wealthy or even comfortable. He's never said that. But he does provide us with what we need. 
As the psalmist wrote in 37, 25, he said, I was young and now I am old and I have yet to see the righteous forsaken. We need to come to God each and every day. But you know what? The world, you hear me speak all the time about the world. It's a dangerous place out there. We will try to lead God's children every which way but to God. The world can't be content with what we have, you know, just our daily bread. The world always wants a little more than they have been given. I look around, you see so many who have never thought of giving back to God ever, who hardly, if ever, praise his name or think of God at all. It's always me, 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 give me more, give me more, and give me more. You ever, it's funny, when I was reading over this this morning, just going over it, I thought to myself, I don't know how many here, you know, Natalie, when she was growing up, uh, you know, one of the big movies was uh, Finding Nemo. I think that was it, yeah. And the seagulls. They were always like, mine, 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 mine. mine. Did anybody ever see that? Mine, or mine. Or that tree here. But it's the first thing that came into my mind when I was reading, and I'm thinking, wow, that is literally how it is, how they are in the world. So what does the Bible say about being content? Well, Timothy 6, 6 through 8 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we will take nothing out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. See, God's trying to make a statement about what is important. It all goes back to what we read in Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus tells us to first seek the kingdom of God. That's the most important. Seek the kingdom of God. And if you ever think that you have very little material possessions, just take a look at Jesus' material possessions. He had none. He had no house. He had no livestock. He had no boat. He didn't even have a camel, a donkey. In fact, listen to what he says in Matthew 8, 20. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. See, Jesus didn't have anything, but he was content knowing that his Father would provide everything they needed. Now, if this is how the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords lived, don't you think it should, we should give thanks to the Lord for everything that we have? Everything. Because everything we have comes from God. Everything we have comes from God. So why do we say blessings over our meals? Why do we give thanks? It's just not some empty rite that we perform, or it shouldn't be. When we pause to pray at mealtime, we're acknowledging our dependence on God, our Father. We depend on Him for everything that we have. We realize at least three times a day, at least, that He is the great provider. That from His hands, all blessings flow. And we thank Him for it. It doesn't have to be a big, long, drawn-out thing. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for what you give us. We just ask that you bless this, and we ask in Jesus' name. And he would be thrilled. His heart would burst with joy. And it does every time we say it. It's not just our food, but everything we need, and many things we just plain old out enjoy. Some may spend most, if not all, of their lives thinking that they have no one to thank, that they have the idea came to them, that they earned it, that they did it. It's all about me. I know many, many, many people, and I can guarantee you, everybody in here knows exactly many, many, many people. But we know better. Because James 1.17 tells us that every good and perfect gift is from above. That's an important, that, 
That is a short scripture and it's so, so important because it's no doubt that God gives us this day our daily bread. And just because some don't realize it, some don't realize that it comes from God, out of his infinite love and mercy, he still continues to provide because he loves each and every person. So now so far we've talked about all the material things that God provides for us. But when we pray this fourth petition, we're asking for something even greater. I mean, really think about this. We're not just asking for bread or food or other uh, tangible things. No, we are just, Jesus wants us to be asking for something even more essential. I don't know about you, but the Bible, to me, is not just a book. It's a very intricate puzzle that God gives us through the Holy Spirit the ability to read and understand little by little. And I do truly love it when with the help of the Holy Spirit, you see pieces coming together. We've talked about this before. Have you ever read a scripture and you just read on right on through it? It just, you know, it's just another line, another, uh, another little piece. And then you can read that same scripture three months later and it, something just jumps off the page. And the Holy Spirit just shows you something that you had never seen before. Because God's timing to show us all new things is perfect. God talks about this. John talks about this. John 6, 25 says... When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you are, you are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then he asked him, well, what must we do for works uh, that God requires? Jesus said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one that he has sent. So they asked him, what miraculous sign will you give us so that we may believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, I'll tell you the truth. It is not Moses who had given you the bread from heaven. But it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. So when we pray... Give us this day our daily bread. We're not only asking for material needs, but we're asking for our spiritual needs as well. Jesus is the bread of life. Matthew 4, 4 says, Men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Amen. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1 talks to the, about the word. He says, let's remember what Jesus said. He says, work not for food that spoils, but for food that endures eternal life. But I don't know about you, but I'm doing just that. I'm trying to do just that. And how, and how often do we do it? Ah, very good. One day at a time. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are just in awe of your authority, your power. And Lord, we just ask that you just uh, watch over us, Lord, and always teach us new things. The things that we heard today, Lord, we just ask that you help us apply them to our lives, Lord, and live it and be part of it, Lord. And we ask you to be right in the middle of it and show us all new things, Lord. And we thank you, Father. And it's in Jesus' name. And the church said... Amen. Amen.
stand and sing evidence. and evil. How's it go? This is our daily bread. This is what comes after that. Deliver us from evil. Yeah, we don't want none of that, right? So next week we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what it means. Um, and that will be the last part of the uh, Lord's Prayer. And hopefully, since we've been through this, when we do pray it, from here on out, we have a, a better understanding of what each line means. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you, Father, for today. We thank you for bringing us here. And Lord, it is just an absolute honor to stand here, Lord, and just uh, uh, preach your word, teach your word, Lord. So thank you for 
Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your understanding, Lord, and thank you for being slow to anger, Lord. We just ask that you watch us and guide us. And as we leave here, Lord, we just ask that everyone get home or where they're going safely, Lord. Uh, bring Maureen, Jordan, and Natalie safely home, Lord, and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen.